gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Conley, is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And Mr. Ray, thank you for those 500 arrests, and I hope there are 500 more. I hope everyone who participated in this outrage is held to account and brought to justice. I might also say, Madam Chairwoman, listening to our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, reminds me of the musical Chicago, where Richard Gere says, when you can't win an argument, razzle-dazzle them. Distract them. Do the shuffle. Talk about Fauci. Talk about masks. Talk about anything but a violent insurrection that cost seven lives. Five here and two suicides. Because two cops internalized the failure that occurred in January 6th on themselves. Ignoring that distracting it, denying it, gaslighting it, calling it just a bunch of tourists who get a little carried away, is repugnant. And a dishonor to the memories of those who did die, and a dishonor and disrespect to those who were willing to put themselves at risk on our behalf, and more importantly, on that of the republic for which we stand. Mr. Ray, Director Ray, um, January 5th, the field office in Norfolk issued an intelligence report warning of online threats discussing specific calls for violence against Congress the next day on January 6th. Words like be ready to fight, get violent, get ready for war. It also stated we get our president or we die, nothing else will achieve this goal. According to previous Congressional testimony you've given, this report was shared in an email with other law enforcement agencies. But for some reason, the report did not make it to the high-level officials who needed to see it, despite its alarming content. Is it true that you did not see this report until after the 6th? Uh, Congressman, I think the report you're referring to is not an intelligence report, but what's, what we refer to as a situational information. It, it, it was a it was a report from your field office in Norfolk, I believe. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes, our so, Norfolk field office. But even so, it's pretty alarming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, it's raw, unverified information not attributed to a specific individual but, online. But, how, but, but I would say it was alarming enough. It was alarming enough that we took steps to share it not one, not two, but three different ways with our partners here in the National Capital Region. One was with an email to their representatives on our Joint Terrorism Task Force who are theirs precisely to be their eyes and ears so everybody makes sure we have the same information. So, Second, it was briefed orally orally to the members of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, including members of the Capitol Police who, again, were there. And then third, on our law enforcement portal, which exists for the very purpose to share information with our partners about potential threat information. Did anyone alert the Capitol Hill Police Chief at the time, Stephen Sund, to the existence of this very alarming field report. I'm not aware of whether he was alerted by anybody in his own department uh, or el elsewhere, but certainly it was shared with the Capitol Police. But you are aware of the fact that that police chief, former police chief, in fact, has testified he was not made aware of it before the 6th. I'm not sure that I'm completely up on what uh, former Chief Sund has, has or has not testified. Okay. I really wouldn't want to care. Was the Se Senate Sergeant at Arms, Michael Stenger, or the House counterpart, Paul Irving, made aware of this report prior to January 6th? I don't know the answer to that. Would you agree that if they weren't, and they both testified, they all testified they weren't, that in retrospect, they should have been, and that that field report should have been elevated to the highest level of concern, given what was happening here in the Capitol, and given the words that were being used, and the high internet traffic, in which the phrase, storm the Capitol, in fact, frequently occurred? You know, Congressman, it's hard for me to evaluate with the lens of 2020 hindsight how each of them should, should run their departments. I, I do think that we tried very hard to, using the established processes, to get the information to the partners who need to have it 
Uh, and like I said, not leaving it to chance, not one, not two, but three different ways. Uh, but certainly we're going to be looking hard on our end to figure out are there better ways for us to share information beyond the ways that we have been doing it uh, as we go forward. I wish I had more time to explore that with you. I hope somebody will. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. The gentleman yields back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white military looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black on white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. And I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage up, across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it 
via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy... Is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day to day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure, it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.